So hello and welcome to my presentation. So my presentation is on my dissertation and my dissertation is on exercise. Uh, so it's about how exercise is deeply rooted within mental health, uh, the effect exercise can have on well-being and stress in particular. So to start with, I'll explain a little bit about myself. So I'm Tilly Williams. I am a student just finishing up my master's in counselling. Uh, I'm a trainee counsellor. Uh, I'm also worked for eight years now as a sports coach and for three years as a duty manager in the Leisure Centre. And those latter two jobs are very much linked into exercise. And it's something, of course, like I said, I've got a lot of experience in from eight and three years in either job. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of exercise and seen how it can help different types of people and help in different types of ways for different types of people. Um, so the, the coaching itself, I've helped a lot of people train and develop different kind of skills. Some people to use it maybe quite generally, some people to use it maybe quite specifically. So generally, maybe people that do it just for just for the health benefits and the mental health benefits in this case. And some might do it for uh, sporting performance in this particular sport to become an athlete. Um, and the Leisure Centre job, again, that just links into um, just some of the work around exercise again being around exercise, sorting out sessions, conducting sessions, running sessions, all types of things like that. And again, that's all all the knowledge in the background that will link uh, heavily to the counselling side and the mental health side. So I'm going to move on to talking about the linked research. So the research that is linked very much to, to the work I did and my partners in the dissertation. Uh, so firstly, I'm going to talk about endorphins and the endorphin release that comes from exercise. Uh, Bratch et al. and Mickelson et al. both did some brilliant research that found very significant results uh, in terms of endorphin release and how that endorphin release comes from exercise in particular. So they measured a lot of um, during and after exercise of how um, the, the endorphin release kind of affected people uh, in terms of mental health and their well-being. So they found uh, that endorphins help people to feel more positive, to feel better, and especially after exercise, they would tend to have this endorphin release and that would raise their energy level and would really benefit them just mentally. So a lot higher scores on all their, all their measurements. Uh, similar is the work of Kanromi et al. and Amy et al. So again, they looked into Kanromi et al. firstly looked into groups exercise and how group exercise can have an effect uh, in particular on mental health uh, compared to maybe uh, lone exercise or exercise not in groups so for example maybe um, a group exercise might be considered um, maybe some a class a hit class or something like that so you're doing your kind of own activity but within a group so again you're not maybe maybe not relying or linking to anyone else Really, you're just doing your own bit of exercise, but with other people. And they found that people tend to have higher rates of mental health in the scores and the measures that they took on. And similarly, in Amy et al's work, they looked particularly more into sports and how sports had an effect on mental health and actually improved mental health compared to even maybe group, group activities. So sports would be a team sport. So let's say football, uh, where people would work together towards a common goal different to uh, group exercise group exercise like i said you'd be doing your own thing uh, but within a group with other people a team sport is your all you all have to work together towards the same kind of goal and you work more as a system rather than on your own uh, so they found amy et al found that um the team sports like i said would raise mental health people who took part in team sports compared to maybe group exercise or maybe alone exercise, they tended to have much higher rates of mental health well-being. And moving on to indoor versus outdoor. So in particular, in this case, uh, Thompson et al, White et al, Hunter et al and Rowe et al, all four of these studies looked very much at indoor and outdoor activity, uh, finding mixed results. And um, they found some results in terms of indoor and outdoor being quite, quite similar. And Thompson et al especially found that a big difference between indoor and outdoor activity. Um, so Hunter Calipsi and Yu Pen Chen, they found they were looking into cortisol levels or so Rowetal. They were looking into uh, how cortisol level 
uh, would raise when they were outdoors. So they'd have a higher rate of cortisol and that would mean that it, well, they explained that that is, was shown due to being outdoors and being, being linked more to nature. So that is what they discuss in their, in their work. Um, and again, I said, you know, indoor and outdoor, there was one, one study that looked into the difference, but found that it was quite similar. Uh, there wasn't much difference between indoor and outdoor, uh, but most studies did find that outdoor activity in, increased um, links to nature and help people feel more positive and better again. And the last one I'm going to talk about here in linked research is depression, anxiety. That's another big thing. Uh, again, that would link to to um, exercise. So Callahan and Raglin both found that um, exercise can relieve symptoms of depression and anxiety, which is a massive, massive thing. Again, that could possibly even link again to the first the first studies I talked about uh, with the Bush and Italian Michelin et al. in terms of the endorphin release and how maybe uh, exercise can be used as a treatment almost for depression and anxiety. As I said, their results found very significant um, findings that uh, exercise can have a brilliant effect on uh, reducing depression and anxiety symptoms. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the methods and run you through the methods quickly. Uh, so me, Ian Ford and Ruby Altman all uh, designed an initial novel questionnaire altogether uh, for the participants to take part in. Um, it, we also included WEMWEBS, PERMA and PSS. So WEMWEBS was to measure well-being, PERMA was to measure well-being along with happiness and PSS is perceived stress scale. So that was uh, a course to uh, measure perceived stress. Um, they also, 10 um, participants also had the opportunity to uh, follow up in a transcribed interview, um, which was normally about, it normally was about 10 to 15 minutes in total of um, just questions, again, regarding uh, mental health and exercise in particular. Um, we use an opportunity sample, so a lot were from uh, SONA, which is a um, which is a thing that people have to do in their first year um, to gain to gain credits. They take part in in other people's studies. Normally, people who are third year or master students who are doing their dissertation, so you get credits basically for taking part in um, other people's research. And again, we have three hundred and fifty respondents, all UK based adults. Who were 18 to 65 years old, so quite being quite gen, general there in the age range. Uh, the mean age was 27.87 and the standard deviation was 13.13. Uh, we had 231 female respondents, 104 male and one non-binary, so 69% of people who took part in our study were female. Uh, we split the groups differently, so we had um, Indoor versus outdoor exercise, we had lone versus social exercise, so group exercise, and regular exercises versus occasional exercises. Uh, so the six, we had six independent measures and overs, and we conducted six independent uh, measures and overs, comparing difference in lone and group exercise and as well indoor and outdoor exercise. And we conducted three independent measures t-test exploring the effects of regular versus occasional exercises. So moving on to the results. So the results showed a significant difference between groups for when web, so that's well-being, scores of indoor and outdoor as well as social and um, lone exercise differences. Uh, there was no significant effect between either group in the PERMA scores or the PSS scores. But all three t-tests that, that were conducted found a significant effect of regular exercise compared to occasional exercise on all three of the measures. So that's WEMWEBS, PERMA and perceived stress. So we had higher levels of well-being in terms of WEMWEBS higher terms of well-being and happiness in terms of PERMA and lower rates of perceived stress also. Um, in terms of the interview data um, in stage two, that was the interview. So them 
uh, having a transcribed interview, we were taking down what they were discussing with us. And 100% of those participants, all 10, strongly agreed that there was a link between exercise and mental health for them personally. And like I said, in terms of the quality data, qualitative data, um, one participant mentioned having to bridge the gap left by sports. So that's linking to Amy et al's work there in terms of this participant's really missing um, that sport and interaction with others. One participant mentioned exercise and mental health tying into one another. So having an effect on each other directly. And one other participant also mentioned something was missing without exercise for them personally in terms of mental health. And here's a graph showing uh, the WEM web scores and the difference in an indoor versus outdoor. So we found a significant difference between one third indoor and two thirds outdoor compared to all exercise being indoor. Um, so like the graph shows, it shows there that all indoor exercise were quite low on well-being scores and the two thirds being outdoors and one third indoors showed us the higher scores of well-being. Uh, having all exercise outdoors did drop a little bit, which could be explained by them having no baseline kind of indoor exercise to compare to. Um, but yeah, like I said, it still shows a finding. Moving on to the discussion. So there's a, like I said, there's a clear difference between indoor and outdoor exercise, which was also mentioned in the quality of data as some participants mentioned feeling much more linked to nature uh, being outdoors and they felt that improved their mental health. Um, it was also true of social exercise. So social versus lone, we did find a significant difference between groups, uh, but it wasn't clear in which exact direction and which two groups were diff different. Uh, but it was supported by the qualitative data, as people mentioned, uh, a preference for group and uh, sport exercise, as mentioned by the participants who said she had to bridge the gap that was left by sports in her exercise regime. Uh, so in terms of exercise and regular exercise, we had a clear significant effect on all measures. So that was PERMA. Uh, when webs and perceived stress PSS. Um, so it supports a lot of the work that I mentioned in the um, second slide in terms of other work in the field. It supports a lot of that work. Uh, the qualitative data did clearly show an effect from COVID in terms of sports and group exercises that was not um, allowed as such during a lot of the restrictions. Um, and possibly needing further research in terms of this study looking more into Mickelson et al and Balchin et al uh, because they mentioned in their work that exercise could be a replacement for medication it could have the same effect as medication and that again links to Callahan and Raglin in terms of alleviating depression and anxiety. So here is a graph again that shows regular versus occasional exercise and you can see there the major change uh, from uh, zero zero being occasional there um, and their score has been just under 43 in terms of when webs as well-being score and regular all the way up at 47 then it showed a very significant difference um, and like I said you can see that clearly in the graph that there's a massive difference a massive jump in well-being rates from occasionally exercising compared to regularly exercising um, and the biggest thing I wanted to reiterate again was just that importance of replacing medication so instead of using medication and, and doctors in that sense to to try and prescribe things to help mental health that exercise can be an easy um kind of solution or other focus that it can be suggested in counseling just the same and it's something that can naturally work on your mental health and also physical health in that sense can have benefits in all areas so yeah moving on to the last last page so i just want to thank you all uh, for listening and again i really hope you did enjoy the presentation and i am very very happy to answer any questions that you might have and like i said again just really hope you all enjoyed it and you can take something away in the sense of the counseling world something that you could always bring to counseling is that is that exercise 
Thank you very much.